Okay, so here is our HX711 board. We want to convert it so it uh, takes not 10, but 80 samples per second. Um, and in order to do that, uh, we need to modify this module uh, ourselves. So this uh, chip actually has two modes of operation and it all depends on whether uh, one of its pins, the rate pin, is connected to VCC or GND or ground. Um, it's usually on these boards connected to ground with no easy possibility to flip it to VCC in order to get the 80 Hz mode. So we need to do it ourselves. Uh, according to, this, uh, to the data sheet of the IC itself, you can see that it, um, uh, its rate pin is here, opposite of the first pin. And the first pin is marked with a small dot. Now, uh, here on our board, let's take a closer look. Okay, so this is the dot marking pin 1, which is here. Pin numbering goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. in a counterclockwise fashion, so this is the last pin. We can see that the rate pin is the second to last, or this one right here. And on this board, you can actually see with your bare eye that uh, it is connected to this pin here, uh, which is actually the ground pin, as you can see on this other board. Now, on this board, what you could do is just cut this trace here and connect this pin here uh, to the positive terminal because this pin is indeed connected there uh, through this trace which goes all around here to VCC. And uh, it's uh, similar in all other boards because they all have uh, the same configuration, but they don't all have the same layout. So uh, while it's all basically uh, configured like here, uh, you might not see these pads. Uh, so uh, this trace might not be here, it might go this way or there might be an, a hole that goes through uh, on to the other side of the board and it's connected through via the other side of the board to the ground pin etc etc so the safest thing to do is to actually disconnect this pin uh, now the recommended way to go about this is to heat it up with a soldering iron and lift it up with a, with a pair of tweezers uh, this is pretty uh, difficult to do and um, at least for me it takes a bit of skill and uh, it took me a couple of uh, failed messed up boards uh, to actually do it successfully so in the end uh, what I ended up doing is uh, to just use a pair of snips to cut it off cut off the pin and then bridge it to the adjacent pin which is connected to VCC itself um, so the problem here is that uh, uh, while it gets snipped, the pin twists. Uh, this might lift off the pad or it might break the IC, but as these boards are usually about a dollar each, um, I just stock up and uh, that's it. And um, account for a couple of failed tries, but it's been working fine for me. So, the way I do it is, I try to get to this pin, grip it like so, then just squeeze in order to cut it off. Okay, now let's take a look. You can see that it is cut clean off. Okay. Now, uh, what we need to do uh, is to clean up this pad so we don't accidentally uh, solder uh, the pad and the stump of the pin back together.
What I recommend here, though it's not needed, is to use a uh, flux. Put some of it on there. And it uh, would be a good idea to drag a soldering wick across it, which I don't have. Uh, so I'll just try to clean it with my soldering iron. So it's heating up. I'll clean it up a bit. And now I'm trying to drag my iron over the pad and picking up whatever is on it and I'll give you a close-up in just a bit okay now I just put the iron in there and you can see that uh, the pad is mostly clean and the pin is, the stump of the pin is flying in the air. So let's connect it to the adjacent pin. bit too much solder. The important thing is is that the bridge isn't also drooping down to the ground pin because that would equate to a short circuit. And that's about it. Now you can see that there's a bit of a clump of solder on top of the stump connecting to the adjacent pin while the pad underneath uh, the rate pin, the old pad, is uh, just empty. Okay. So now let's check what's what. And if we did it as we should have, I will put my meter in continuity testing mode. It beeps when I do that because the continuity testing mode's main purpose is to beep when there is a connection. Okay, so let's see if this little bridge that is the rate pin is connected to ground, which it should not be. And indeed, there is no beep. And it connects to VCC. And that's it. Your uh, HX711 should now be in 80 samples per second mode.